Hello and welcome back to my workshop again, Tills Workshop. Now today, we're back on the old Insignia. Um, obviously you know that I bought this a bit cheap and we're doing a repair job on it to do a bit of a trade up on it. Now obviously I've done the rocker cover, gasket, done the spark plugs. Now we're going to be doing this temperature gauge, so I'm going to show you about that. And show you what is going on and why is it playing up. So when it's plugged in, the gauge reads that it's literally maxed out 130 degrees. Now the temperature gauge also controls the choke and the way the fueling is. So when it's obviously like that, it is literally epically like the fuel trims way out. But when you unplug it, it runs quite nice. But I'm gonna show you what I mean. I'm gonna show you the sensor as well. And then we're gonna go from there. So first of all, let's find the sensor. So the sensor, right, so I'm gonna do a little zoom in. So there is the sensor on the side of the head, if you can see that, that's the sensor there. And it's already unplugged. So this is the plug here, see? I've already got it unplugged. Now if I plug this sensor in, so I'm gonna plug it in now, like that. So it's now plugged in. Now when I go in the car, watch this. I get the key. There we go. There we go. Here we go. So, so if you look at the temperature gauge, which is the little one here, this is your temperature gauge. When I turn the ignition on, turn it on there. Yeah. So, if you look at that. The temperature gauge now is on 130 degrees. Apparently it's boiling over. So what I'm gonna try and do is see if I can set this hole up now. So it's how I want it to be by set up like that. Put it there, like that. Now I'm gonna go outside and I'm gonna unplug it and open it. Let's try. Have a look. Here we go. Gonna unplug it now. Here we go. Yeah, as I unplugged that, temperature, there it goes. Do you see that? So I've just unplugged it, and now it's gone all the way back down to zero. So that now tells me that that is the sensor that is playing up. So we've already got a replacement. Now we're going to put the new one in. So here we go. Well, so we've got a couple of ways we could change this sensor. One way is, well, the easy way the cheating way which is that we just literally pull the clip yank the sensor lose a bit of cooling out of the hole and then just quickly bang the new sensor in and put the clip back in so but what i'm going to do i'm going to do it the proper way i'm going to undo the bleed screw on the bottom of the radiator i'm going to dump all the coolant let it all go change the sensor put it back in then i'm going to fill it back up and i'll show you filling it up the other reason I'm going to drop all the coolant, if you remember me saying it's got a suspected head gasket. So I'm going to drop the coolant to put fresh in to get a good reading when I do a chemical test on the head gasket. So on the coolant. So I know for a fact that there's a good chance if I get a positive reading, it's probably got a faulty head gasket. So that's what we're going to do. Um, I'll quickly show you the sensor again. And you can see the clip, which is like on the body. I'll try and poke it out with a like point it out with a little screwdriver if you can understand that so it's a bit hard getting the old torch in there how I want it so you can see what I'm trying to talk about because it is literally like well it's not easy <laughs> right so here we go so you look right so the sensor is there you can see the sensor right there there we go that's pretty good that's a pretty good video. So if you look, there's a sensor. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna... So there's a sensor there, and the clip that you gotta pull out is this clip right here. See that clip? And it just literally 
lifts up, pulls out, and that sensor will then exit in this direction, and there's a little O-ring. You've got to make sure you fish the little baby O-ring out. I'll show you the new sensor with the O-ring on it. So this is the new sensor that's got going, and you can see that little O-ring there. So it's a tiny little O-ring. There's a good chance when we pull this sensor out, that O-ring is going to stay in the hole. Anyway, I've showed you where that is. Now what we're going to do, now what we're, I've showed you where all the bits are. So now what we're going to do is we are going to go drop this call in. So that's our first port of call. So we're going to get down the pit, we're going to pop the screw, and I'm going to drain the cooling out and I'm going to show you where all the bits are. So let's do it. Right, so we're now under the car. So this is the driver's side of the radiator and you can see, you can see in that picture there's that red tap right there. That is the drainage screw and that's on the driver's side of the radiator at the bottom. Now theoretically, when I undo that, which is like normal, tight, so I brought down a pair, and we've got to put them off grips, which are here. I'm going to open them up a little bit, I'm going to get them on there, just give it, get it turning, that's it, and that's that, and now physically, can I turn it with my hand? And the answer to that question is yes. So that's it there, see? Let's get a bit of, bit of video. Right, that's it. That's it there. You see the fluid's already started to drain out of it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put the container underneath it, put the hand around on the inside, I'm going to unscrew it. I'm going to let the coolant go. So there you go. So I put my hand through that side. So if you look, you see the screw up there as well. So there you go. So just in case that helps anyone, you can see it all peeing out now. Obviously I've got a little container underneath it, catching all the fluid. There we go. So, first stage complete. The screw is now undone. Fluid is draining. I will say as well, <clears throat> that. I'm going to move this board quickly over to here to make sure that this container doesn't disappear off down the pit when it's so that container doesn't disappear off down the pit because this coolant system probably will hold about six litres of coolant and the last thing is I want six litres of coolant going down my pit. Right, so that's that. Right, next to speed the process up, I'm gonna undo the header cam tap, the tack, tap, the cap on the, gonna undo the header cap to speed the process up. You should hear it go. Here we go. It's going down my pit, isn't it? <sighs> Typical. So as you can see, I had a little flood. So lost about two liters of fluid in my pit, which is lovely. So now I've got to clean it. In the end, I stop it from running down there by putting a bit of tissue behind the outlet. Cause in their wisdom, Vauxhall has put the outlet pointing backwards towards the back of the car. So when you crack the cap off, the water comes out flat out and pees straight down the actual subframe and then just comes out of everywhere. <laughs> so rather than just drop it out of one place where you put a bucket, it was literally, I was trying to move the tray and literally I needed, I needed two trays really to try and catch it all. So madness. Next time, note to self, drain the coolant outside, not inside. But anyway, there you go. Right, next job, all the coolant's now out. It's definitely drained out. It's now just a couple of drips. So we're going to quickly whip this sensor out. Alright, so that's the sensor there. So first of all, we're going to pop this clip out, which is over the top, which is here. All I'm going to do is I'm going to get my long nose pliers. Make life a little easier. I'm going to get in there. 
get over that clip and straight up out that clip comes see that that's the clip there clips now out and then like I said we're gonna then pull this sensor out so I'm gonna try and get my hands in there and pop out she comes now now as I said I've got the sensor out where's the o-ring it's still in the hole so now I've got to get that out well I just fished it out with that tiny little screwdriver see that that's that little o-ring I just literally just right on the very edge so I just teased it out and there you go so now all I've got to do clean up the hole push the new sensor in what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to get a little screwdriver or something. I'm just going to clean the hole up and then get a bit of tissue and twist a bit of tissue in the hole or maybe a bit of brake clean on, try to make sure everything's off. And I'll grease the new O-ring and I'll pop it in the hole. We should be good. Right, so at the moment we're trying to clean out this hole where it sits. I'm going to put this here. Aim this down where it should be. It's kind of right. At the moment, I've got some brake cleaner. Now, I don't make it very accessible, but that's pretty normal. I'm gonna shove that in the hole. Give it a little twist. Hopefully, we get most of the dirt out. Looks pretty clean. And now, what we're gonna do? We get our new sensor. Show around. Go. Now what I've done is I've put quite a bit of grease on to kind of help it because I've not put any grease in the hole yet so what I've done is I've put some grease in it uh, all over it so my idea is as I push it in the hole it should physically oil it up as it goes <laughs> oh, it doesn't make things easy this I wonder if I can unclip this. Hang on. This, this is a nightmare. Well, where's the little screwdriver? See if I can take this, unclip this, and take this out of this fitting. At least make my life a There we go. Now, I'm hoping now, yeah, that's a bit better. So, note to self, remember that next time. In. there's not much of a step on there so theoretically look it keeps popping out so what we got to do I'm gonna take this cam sensor out as well so I'm gonna plug this cam sensor as well which should give me a bit more room there we go that's it I wonder if I can just in the right position there we go so I don't know how well you can see what's going on <clears throat> probably not very let me try and get this in a better place right. that's a bit better so as you can see the sensor's in there so basically as I'm pushing it in the, the gasket is popping it back out so what I've got to try and do is put the clip over, push it in, and then push the clip all the way home, like so. Now that sense, that clip doesn't hold very well either. It doesn't seem to be very tight on there, you know? But what I might actually do quickly I'm going to tease that clip in. I'm going to give that a little squeeze with the old pliers. Shut the gap up a little bit. 
so it's a bit tight around there there we go it's a bit better and then here we go again put that on push the sensor all the way home and then push it all the way home make sure it's located all the way in get that clip in the place push it all the way home and then once it's all the way home we'll clip that on there we go there we go that's better and I'm glad I did that as well because that's that cam center and it is covered in oil so we're going to quickly wash that off give that a quick wash off but what we're going to do before we do that because the because that water temperature sensor is pointing up we're going to put this over the top which will stop all the brake cleaner from going inside the sensor the tissue will get saturated but it will stop it from going in because I believe the reason why the last sensor packed up was because oh, um, because of the oil leak basically so the oil had got into if you imagine into the head of the sensor and then just got inside the sensor and then it just just killed it just killed the sensor we'll give that a rinse off and where's the last plug last plug here this is the temperature sensor plug so we'll give that a quick rinse off there we go let them dry out a little bit got this cloth stuff here like that's off of that one there we go tear that loose a little bit we'll let that dry out and then once that's dried out we'll clip it all back together and off we go i'll take this bit of tissue out of the way because there's no need for it to be there anymore there we go a little wipe off down there <clears throat> Give that a bit of a clean off around there. That as well. Gotta get rid of some of the oil. So you can see the sensor in there, right down there. See the little clip. Oh, obviously we've just cleaned it with some brake cleaner. Like all the other plugs around it because they are smothered in oil where that rock cover's leaking. So we do that. Now all we've got to do is let them dry off a little bit. <sighs> them a little blow, blow what's left out. <sighs> That's it. Let that dry off. And we'll start plugging everything back in. There we go. Right, so it should be dried out enough now. So now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna put this little plug back on here. I'll go on the new temperature sensor, cam sensor back in. There we go, push the little safety clip back in. Obviously I undone this. Which is accidentally somehow got clipped back together. I'm gonna take that cable back in, put that back in there. And then we're gonna get it where we want it and then clip that back in there like that. So that's back in, that's back in. We're all back in there, temperature gauges in. So next job, got to do this tap up. Which will be down here. I'm going to just lump a bit of tissue that way. Nice. Right, so. Right, so if I do this right, got that one up on that, and then we get this in a perfect position. Right, I think. Can you see it? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yes, you can. You can just see the tap down the bottom, so I'm going to put my arm around there. So, you see the tap? Right there from the top. I'll screw that back in. All the way. That's it. So taps back in. Right, next bit. Obviously, so we drained the corner out of it. We've got to now fill it back up. So here we go. Put that in there. In goes the coolant. 
I'm going to show you a little trick though, which will help. If you put a light on top of the bottle, like so, it lights the bottle up, the bottle will, will glow as such, like so, and you can see where the coolant is inside it. Very, a lot easier, look, than without. Mm. Now, because we drained it, this engine has a, some engines will self bleed, so see these pipes here, they come from the cylinder head, gets the air out of the head, but some of them don't, and this one, do, there's, it doesn't completely drain itself. So, down here, right, you can see it there just about in the top of the radiator right there top left hand side you got to undo that what have i got i've got a little stumpy phillips i'm going to go with that got a little stumpy phillips in there you see what i'm doing yeah as i unscrew it you hear the air come out and the coolant drops and we've got to keep going because what's happening now is the radiator is filling up. So we've got circulation. So as that's out, there it goes. Bit of bubbly, bubbly. That's it. Now for the time being, that has now got all the air out of the radiator, but not all of it. What will have to happen as the engine runs, a bit more air will find its way back into there. So later on whilst it's running, you have to do a second little bleed just to make sure you get everything out. So that's where we are at the moment. Now let's top her up, finish topping it up, right back up. So again, you can see the bottle. Let's top it up to the max. And I'm gonna take it slightly over because I guarantee when it starts up, it's going to eat it. There we go. Slightly over, just slightly. A little bit extra. There we go. So that's that. Tap back on. Wow. Look for water leaks, anything down there? No, she's nice and dry. Now what we're going to do, we're going to do the old, check the old ignition and see what's happening inside when we turn the old ignition on. So, <clears throat> we're now back inside, the new sensor's plugged in, and hopefully, when we turn it on, that's it. It's not literally flying off the edge of the world. So brilliant. So let's make sure that nothing's where it shouldn't be. Make sure nothing's where it shouldn't be. When we give it a little fire up, like the light sitting on top of all the pulleys. Nice. I'd have made a proper mess. No, I'm not going to work. I think everything's out of the way. Let's get these screw screwdrivers from off over here. Let's get them get that one off that one off sensor out of the way get this little one off as well and let's see how, how well she starts now I'm expecting her to be I'm expecting her to be pretty much on the button although I haven't done the bolt up very well so you might find and uh, might just get and then it won't start handbrakes off though so no handbrakes on so let's give it a whirl shall we not in gear? Nope. <sighs> Got to push clutch down. Right, here we go.
sounds a lot better as well a lot more healthier no bogging on the button the radiator fan is still going but if I remember correctly it takes a little bit of while for it to kind of figure out what's going on but we can see the temperature gauge now it's sitting on 50 degrees so it knows it's now cold the engine runs a whole lot better we're really good really good So that is great success. So yeah. Hope you enjoyed watching anyway. If so, please like and subscribe and we'll go from there.